The Big Bang Theory provided theists with a strong argument for the existence of a creator. The Kalam cosmological argument was revived and championed by William Craig by this discovery. And some people thought that the Big Bang is a natural reason to claim a beginning for the universe and therefore for the need for a creator. Stephen Hawking and William Hartle thought to have refuted this claim by showing that the universe could have existed for an infinite extension of imaginary time prior to its creation. This might sound as eliminating a beginning for the universe. Hawking then questioned what a role for a creator. If you accept, as I do, that the laws of nature are fixed, then it doesn't take long to ask, what role is there for God? This is a big part of the contradiction between science and religion. And although my views have recently made headlines, it is actually an ancient conflict. Indeed, if there will be no beginning, and if the role of the Creator is to be restricted to that beginning only, then the Creator has lost his job and became redundant. Although the hawking hartle conjecture is mathematically true, it has no physical meaning. A universe described to exist in imaginary time is not physically available, for the imaginary quantities are not measurable, as we know, and therefore are non-physical. This means that if the universe could have existed for an infinite extension of imaginary time before it began to exist in reality, then surely it was non, in, a, in a non-physical state. In such a state, in such a state, you can say anything you like, and since the rule of cause and effect ceases to exist, we cannot then talk about physics at such a uh, stage of the universe. In our theories, there are two kinds of time. There is what is called real time. This is the kind of time that is measured by a clock. The time that we feel passing, the time in which we grow older. Then there is imaginary time. Of course, imaginary time is an idea that science fiction writers, like Arthur, have used in their stories. But imaginary time is also a well-defined mathematical concept. It can be thought of as a direction of time that is at right angles to ordinary, real time, in a certain sense. The universe has a beginning in real time, at the Big Bang. And it may well have an end if it collapses to a big crunch. But in imaginary time, it has no beginning or end. Rather, imaginary time is closed in on itself, like the surface of the Earth. On the other hand, as nothing can turn into something according to our present theory of physics, then physics tells us that there must be a reason for that. Hawking, in his book, The Grand Design, and more recently, William Krause, in his book, Something from Nothing, are selling the argument that the universe could have been created spontaneously, spontaneously, from vacuum, without any need for a creator. This is based on the description given by our present theory of quantum fields, which says that the physical nothing, that is the vacuum, is composed of virtual negative and positive energy states that are con 
continuously wobbling within very short times that do not allow them to be measured. Therefore, such states are called virtual. Well, accordingly, we can imagine that not the nothing is co uh, as called a vacuum is composed of any number of, say, pairs of elephants with positive and negative energies, but only existing for a very short, non-measurable time. If the lifetime of such virtual elephants uh, get prolonged, then they might turn into real ones. Such a description of vacuum has already solved many problems in theoretical physics. However, such virtual states cannot turn into real ones spontaneously. There must be an external field of force that would dilate time, dilates the virtual, the time of the virtual states to turn them into something, hopefully not elephants. A stationary vacuum cannot turn into something without the in inclusion of an external field of force, like for example gravity. Gravity, or what we call the curvature of space-time, has to interfere in order for the vacuum to turn into something. This is why Stephen Hawking considered gravity as the necessary and sufficient cause for the creation of the universe, without the need for a creator. So, without gravity, vacuum, that is to say the state of nothing, cannot turn into something on its own. Space-time, in its most natural state, is flat, as, as we know, having what we call maximal symmetry. The maximal symmetry has to be broken, and this cannot be achieved spontaneously. If gravity will be necessary then to turn vacuum into real, virtual states in the vacuum into real states, then the question comes, who has created gravity? Who has curved the space-time to provide the vacuum with the force necessary to split negative and positive energy states, virtual energy states, uh, into and turn them into real? A question that begs an answer, for sure. On the other hand, if we are to bargain on the indeterminism of nature, then we should know that such extremely low probability events like creation of the universe spontaneously out of vacuum, brings up new questions. The question was raised by Paul Davis in his Accidental Universe. As the question comes, as who is playing with these probabilities? Who is, who is deciding which probability to pick up? Therefore, the fact that our universe began to exist remains to be valid and that the spontaneous emergence of our universe from vacuum remains to be questionable.